Hey, good morning, guys. Okay, so I'm having my morning coffee with you guys. I figured uh, before I started my day, I would uh, shoot uh, some of you guys out a, um, just a hello. I know it's uh, it's so much reading all the time that I post, uh, so I figured I'd give you a little bit of a break uh, with all my posts. Um, I seem to have one lazy eye happening. <laughs> all right, what the fuck? I'll still throw this out. All right, so um, just a, a bit about myself. Uh, my name's Tammy Angelosha, and uh, so I know some of you don't know me, some of you do. Um, lots of you I've done time with, uh, some of you I haven't. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. So uh, my name's Tammy Angelosha, and um, uh, the reason um, that I feel qualified to speak to you guys and to do this, um, to do this, I don't know what this is, uh, yet, um, I'm being led in uh, places that I, I didn't necessarily want to go. Uh, I was raised in uh, the Quebec Youth uh, Protection Program, um, and um, I entered uh, at nine years old into the system. My sister and I, my sister was 10, um, as uh, youth uh, protection. Uh, my mother for whatever reason, um, couldn't take care of us. Um, and uh, so sh we, were, we were brought to uh, social services or, or whatever. And it was a place called Mount St. Patrick's in Outremont. It was a complete nightmare. Uh, there was, I don't know how many children there, but their ages, they were ages six to uh, 12 years old, I believe. After 12, they went into the group homes and to the uh, detention centers. But uh, Mount St. Pat's uh, was open, I believe, uh, it seems, uh, they've destroyed all the files conveniently. But uh, uh, um, finding each other uh, all these years later on Facebook, uh, we've come together and, um, and formed some kind of timeline. It seemed to have been open for about five, six years. Uh, it was probably, probably a little bit too rowdy for Outremont. Uh, the police were at this center uh, 911. I don't know if 911 existed back there. Back then, uh, this is in the late 70s, uh, er, uh, early 80s. Uh, they opened from maybe 77, 76 to about 82. And uh, I would imagine that it was the uh, town of Outremont that said, okay, <laughs> whoa, what's going on here with this place? Um, we ran the show. Uh, Real cool kids. Um, they're like my today. Today we've gotten back together after all these years, and um, when we meet up, we're like little brothers and sisters. And some of the these men, these boys that I was raised with, I don't even know what to say. I don't know how it became so rough for them. I have no idea what happened to these nice boys and girls, but it's been hell. Anyway, so I would imagine that Outremont uh, in the town of Montreal uh, closed up shop there. Uh, like I said, the police were there weekly. Um, we would have riot nights where all the kids in the center would just go wild. Uh, there was never any therapy in these places. Uh, so we were just kind of thrown together. Um, the, us younger kids, we did what the older kids told us to do. Um, they're basically who raised me, was the older system kids because um, the uh, staff were too busy with the children in the closets. Yeah. Anyway, whatever, we'll save that for the lawsuit. But uh, so a little bit uh, about me. My name is Tammy Andalosha. I come from uh, probably, probably the street, the system. I, I don't even know. I come from prison anyway. Um, and um, I passed um, pretty much my whole life inside uh, prison. Uh, from nine, I got, I got pregnant. I ran away from the system at 15 years old, and I got pregnant while I was on the run. Smoking. Anyway, I uh, got pregnant when I was out on the run, and... Um, uh, they told me when I got caught, I'm probably tired, turned myself in, something like that. That's that's what we do. 
and we run and then we get tired and we're kids man anyway so uh I got sent, I was in maximum security. They let me out uh, on a day pass, a little pass to watch uh, in Shawbridge to watch the uh, the other children play baseball. I guess I was on good behavior or something. Um, I was in a maximum security place, uh, not because I had done a crime, but because um, I kept running away from the system. I, I hadn't been caught for a crime um, before I was 19 years old. Uh, so I was locked in these maximum security places because I didn't follow the internal rules of the system. So um, I will get into that on another video about um, what they tell you. Uh, these youth detentions are holding real dangerous children. Uh, that's a lie, but that's uh, not what my purpose is today. Uh, there's so much ground to cover uh, and I'm always looking for a team to help. Uh, to help with what I don't know just I guess to uh, to try to bring a, a little bit of justice back into these systems that are so criminal and so corrupt anyways and uh, and these prisons uh, so um, uh, so when I was 19 they told me when I was 15 uh, if I kept the baby when I got caught there they they brought me back to the maximum uh, child's prison and uh, they said I found out I was pregnant they said if I if I kept the baby I could leave the system He's 33 years old today. It's been a hell of a ride for him. Uh, and of course, me at 15 years old, whoa, out of the system forever? Fucking right, I'm keeping that kid. So, uh, yeah, dragged him through the uh, through the mud with me. He's a, he's a trooper. Um, anyways, uh, then returned back to the systems. Uh, I had two sons uh, between 15 and 18. And um, yeah, they're good guys for sure. Um, but um, and then I went back to the system at 19 years old. Uh, I didn't spend one birthday out of prison um, from 19. I believe my first birthday out was um, when I was 40. I, I I do believe that because I ended up back in the small town, Megog, Quebec that I was born in and it was with my sister and my niece and uh, it was really interesting to realize my 40th birthday there I was sitting in the small town that I was born in I had never been there um, as an adult after uh, I was a child I didn't go back um, but there I was it came full circle um, anyway so um, so I consider myself an expert on the prison systems um, the women's prisons do not run like the men's prisons do. We do not have bosses on our wings. Nobody is going to fucking tell me what to do in jail. Nobody. I ain't paying dues to nobody. I don't know what the fuck that shit is. Beating up old men in prison and shit for their tobacco. That, that's in Quebec, by the way. I, I don't really want to get into that. But a lot of the stuff that passes in Quebec would never, never. Those men that beat that old man last year, I believe, uh, in Bordeaux for his, because he didn't pay his dues for his tobacco, those men, I'd like to see them go out and deal with the Indians out west. The Indians will kill them. You don't beat old men up and you don't bully shit. You don't, you, you just don't do that. Um, Anyway, like I said, the stuff that happens in Quebec uh, systems would never pass out west. I did time all over the country, and uh, and I was quite shocked with, with Quebec. Uh, not sure what's going on with Quebec. But uh, <coughs> anyway, didn't want to get into that right now either. Uh, so um, I, I just wanted to talk about who I was, where I came from, uh, what I'm doing. Uh, last year, a, a little grammy. I had done my time. I, I did my shit. I was raised to do my time and shut the fuck up. Um, and don't whine and don't, don't complain. And that's what I did all my life. No problem. Peace, man. Um, trying to grind, you know, trying to get my shit together and stuff. But then last year, a little grampy girl died um, here in uh, Quebec. And uh, this brought open 
and opened a can of worms for the Youth Protection Service of, of Quebec. Little seven-year-old Granby girl died. She was uh, she had a, a big file with the uh, she had a big file with the youth protection, and um, um, and uh, they ignored the complaints. And finally, she was taken removed from her closet and rushed to emergency. I guess the noise from the, the neighbors it was just too much that time. Uh, but there were several complaints. Uh, over the past year, and I do believe I'm not an expert in that case. I I I, I just skimmed it, um, but I do believe that uh, the woman, the baby was taken away when she was six years old the year before from the from the home, uh, because the stepmother had beat the shit out of the kid at six years old. So she was removed back and she was put back into the house that she was removed from. She was suspended from school by the pr principal of this school, and him. He needs to find a hole and fucking crawl in it. Uh, this is bad shit, man. This is bad, bad stuff for a principal of the school to send that. Day. He, he suspended the little girl because she was going through the garbages and stuff at the, maybe stealing some food or something at, at school. She was hungry. And he suspended her and uh, not sure again. Um, and um, and uh, she went home, and uh, and it was too much time at home. Uh, they removed to finally came in and removed her from the closet. She was alive when they removed her. She died the next day, uh, in emergency in the emergency room. And um, so that opened a can of worms here in Quebec. Since then, there has been I don't know how many children's deaths um, reported to the news. Uh, years ago, this stuff was unheard of. Uh, the Quebec Youth Protection System, I don't know about the rest of Canada because I, I did my juvie time here in Quebec, but um, it's, it's a powerful, powerful source. Um, um, uh, it's, uh, this is unheard of. Uh, Quebec's very, the, the corruption, the, the, the systems is very, very old school here. It's not, uh, this stuff is really, really, really locked down. It's really... Uh, old crinkety fucking nasty 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 system um and uh the the judges also and the prosecutors hiding behind this ju judicial immunity uh that's a that's a criminal law but uh that's another uh, issue that i i'll tap on one other day um anyway so we we uh, there was somebody that um, we got uh, a lawyer going um and uh, we got a lawyer going. Um, not going to get into that either. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, got a lawyer going. And um, so we are in a major class action right now uh, in Quebec against uh, the youth protection. They were horrific. <laughs> it was heavy. They used to give us cigarettes in the juvie. And um, and this was uh, this was a form of control. This is how they controlled us. This is how they got us to behave in their prisons. Um, they would give us six cigarettes a day, maybe eight. Um, I think I'm not sure unless you were at a visit, then you were allowed to smoke all you wanted. Anyways, um, but they would cut you if you didn't have your shoe on properly. All you got to look forward to is that cigarette. Oh, there was mental shit. The frustration? Incredible. Incredible. Oh, there's gonna be some stories coming out about the cigarettes and what these bastards did to provoke these kids into losing it making them wait for their cigarette wait just wait just wait and then a shift change happens or something and then it's like no you were cutting your cigarette uh there's uh, you're not getting your cigarette well some of the kids didn't take that laying down they snapped waiting being played like that they snapped so now they are the bad guy that now they're the bad kid the police have come over the freak out or you freak out, a write-up's done against you, 
and then now they want to put you in these uh, if it's too bad of a freak out and if it's too many times uh, they put you in maximum security you haven't done a crime other than break internal rules and uh, anyways uh, so I find myself in a very different position in life a position that uh, I didn't think uh, I would ever get to um, I knew that for, for many years now I've known that as soon as I get my shit together, um, I would, I would like to help somehow. I know the system pretty good, and um, I, I, I'm, I would imagine I'm an expert on the system, on the programs, on the blip, on the all of it, all of it, all of it. The robbery on the telephone. Bell Canada is in a major law, uh, class action lawsuit right now, uh, overcharging the inmates. I mean, it's a fortune. People, people lose their telephones because the bill in one month is eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. Uh, that's going to come out too. Um, I think it's Ontario that's in the class action. Uh, other provinces need to start up these class actions. Um, uh, canteen list, stuff like this, um, um, holding people uh, on, not releasing them on bail is illegal. Because in Canada, you are innocent until you are proven guilty. But the reality is that you are guilty until somebody says you're innocent. And that's the truth. And they treat you, the minute you're arrested, you are treated as though you are guilty. major class action legal aid it's a prisoner's human right to be represented by fair counsel if you cannot afford one, uh, uh, to pay for a lawyer on your own legal aid is not fair counsel legal aid is funded by the government and they are under budget overworked and that is other class actions that need to be started I believe there is one already. It might be Ontario again, I'm not sure, look into it. Um, lots, 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 guys, lots. And I know it goes against everything we were taught sitting here whining like this. My position is that after all that time, that's fine, I did the crime, I did the time. No problem, I did my, my end of the bargain, I did it. I did it and I shut up and I, I never ratted on anybody and I, I thought it was always me. It was always me that was the problem. And it was. Everywhere I went, there was a problem. Um, anyways, uh, so after last year, a uh, can of worms opened uh, here in Quebec and um, class action lawsuit, lawsuit was started against the youth protection super happy can't wait to get those bastards in court can't wait um, um, so okay moving along so um, and then um, I find myself after youth protection turned youth offender somehow um, um, found myself not missing a beat hopping right into the um, big girl system uh, where I belonged I was institutionalized young because I was locked up uh, pretty tight uh, maximum security pretty much uh, for running away you know anyway so uh, by the time yeah I fell into adult system like I didn't miss a beat I was home I was home I was where I belonged uh, I did time all over the country provincial and federal mm, for uh, nonviolent crimes uh, I am a fraud artist um, I can't say was Um, out of all my addictions, um, it's been crime the hardest, uh, money, uh, the hardest for me to let go of. Um, um, when I don't have money, I get my hustle on. I've never been a prostitute. Peace, girls, I don't give a fuck what you did. For me, it just, it's not principles or anything. You got to do what you like. 
sucking a bunch of guys off all day long for $40, some of them $5. I just would rather write a check. I don't have to deal with nobody. I don't have to be nice when I want to say fuck off. Write the check, whatever. So anyways, um, so I was lucky that way. I didn't have to uh, put up with people's bullshit, uh, especially men. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Don't even get me going. But uh, it's not that I'm a lesbian. I'm not. I like men too. But I find that uh, men are, are very weak. Uh, I didn't even want to get into this shit right now. But anyway, so I won't. I'll save that for another video and I'll give you guys a, a little word of advice on women and uh, and your needs. Anyway, okay, moving along. So um, anyways, so uh, yeah, just didn't miss a beat. And I find myself today um, sitting here saying, what, what what's going on with that system? And just as the days pro, uh, proceeded, um, I my I'm being kind of like water I have no idea where this is gonna take me where I'm going what the fuck I'm doing I just know that after all those years of being a loyal customer service to the system uh, and doing my part and doing what they raised me to be uh, I find that I did my part but they didn't do their part I hate being fucked over. I hate seeing my friends being fucked over. I hate it. And I was raised, we were raised, it's a weird situation because we were raised um, where it was us kids against the system. Sure, there was some system lovers, there still are. They were removed from such uh, trauma at home that they think the system saved their asses. And it probably just kept them alive. Don't know how well it saved them. But um, <clears throat> anyways, I'm sorry I, I keep babbling. I should take notes, notes doing this. I'm gonna get better, I guess. I, I'm hoping to stop these YouTube videos because I really uh, didn't want to mm, be a YouTuber or um, like I said, I'm just, every day, I'm just going with my gut feeling what I should do. Um, and, um, um, to, I guess, bring some justice back into the systems. Because we all know the systems are needed, right? But the thing is, that the they don't offer any any rehabilitation the youth system didn't even educate us we never saw a graduation at the system nobody ever graduated maybe a certificate made up one in, in one of the uh, youth horizons uh weardale or whatever is uh computer but never a formal graduation they could have shown thrown us out the door at least educated bunch of pricks but no what they wanted to do was they wanted to raise us to keep us going in the system as loyal cu customers some of us might not have been locked up um might not have been locked up physically but they were locked up mentally Maybe they stayed home, trying to raise kids with an addiction. Maybe they never set foot in an adult prison again, um, or an adult prison uh, after juvie. But they were, uh, we were all broken uh, mentally. Um, anyways, so um, so. I, I guess I just, my whole purpose is, uh, my ultimate goal in, in all these videos and stuff is, um, I'm going to smoke. Look, I, I didn't promise you guys a fucking rose garden. I never said this was a fashion show. I'm tired of everybody's expectations. I'm not a homophobic, okay? Like like the fucking guy commented on my YouTube to the thing. 
No, I don't give a fuck what you do. You get through your time, man. Do what you gotta do. I don't care. My only purpose, the only thing I do care about is don't hurt the kids. But my, other than that, I don't give a shit what you do. Get through your time. Get through your life any way you can, man. I don't give a shit. But, um, um, anyway, uh, so, uh, this is a nightmare video. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be smoother than this. I guess I'll get better at this, guys. Okay, so my whole point this morning is, um, to just, to just tell you that, a little bit about who I am, what I'm trying to do. I'm uh, somehow pulled into this native thing too. See, the thing about me is that I didn't give this shit any thought. I did my time, I stopped. I did write an autobiography uh, in 2014, I believe. Yeah, 2014. I had been cl clean for, uh, starting to get clean. I stayed clean for uh, five years, close to five years. Um, and um, I started a company up in Vancouver um, and did kind of a, an experiment. What would happen if a criminal put their mind onto something legal? I quit drugs. This was not uh, all planned there. I'm not, uh, I'm not claiming that it was planned because it wasn't. But it, was, it, it turned out to be an interesting experiment anyway. Uh, after one year of being in business, my company was making $17,000 a month. Uh, that, uh, that was uh, a company called Witches with Brooms, cleaning services. We catered only to millionaires um, uh, in Vancouver. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that was... Then one day, um, I broke up with my boyfriend, sold my clients for $50,000. Gave him half, kept half, and said peace. Um, and it's wa wild because when I told my older son that, the one I, I got pregnant for in detention, he said, Mom, you just made a big mistake. Because even though mm, maybe it wasn't uh, the ultimate romance, uh, we were, mm, he was my best friend. Um, and um, we were just going in different avenues, but, uh, even though I created the company, uh, he was better with finances and stuff. And he was my partner, and he was the best partner. Uh, he wasn't criminal at all. I don't usually date criminals. Got to have somebody there uh, to come for visits, I guess. Anyway, so um, so uh, um, he said I, I had made a mistake, and he was right. Um, regardless, I I, I guess. Uh, when um, it, it was too, it became too much for me. Um, uh, it just became too much. I had lost my business partner, and I couldn't find um, another one that was great like that. And I just couldn't. Uh, I was I was getting weaker and weaker. Um, I could see now, in hindsight, um, that my I, I did end up uh, flying down uh, to Quebec from Vancouver. And uh, because the pressure uh, became too much, I had, I was running the show, my rent was $4,000, driving my kid into school an hour and a half every day because I didn't want her to, uh, to change high schools. Um, but one took off, one of my, my daughter took off. Uh, the other one was always in school and with her friends. Anyways, um, and I guess I was looking for a little bit of a, uh, I'm not sure, anyways, uh, money, lack of money will bring me to my knees. Uh, it's always been my greatest weakness is a lack of money. Uh, I, I, no, it don't work for me. Uh, I'm pretty resourceful, thank God. So I, I usually handle my shit, but um, anyway, so a uh, big story. Anyway, so uh, I flew back to Montreal. Truth be known, I started a little romance with somebody, an old friend. And, um, and uh, I did, I was clean from September, June, June uh, 2014 when I got released from prison. 
I had made a decision that I was going to take off when I when I leave the country or not the country the uh, the province when I got out and uh, and tried to see what I could do I guess um, and my daughters were becoming teenagers my mother was older anyway blah 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 so um, anyways uh, yes yeah, so uh, so January two, uh, 2019 I flew back to Quebec and I did a line of uh, drugs and I'm a diehard. Once I'm up there, I fight to not have to come down. Usually it's prison that stops me. But this time, um, I'd gone on uh, drugs for nine months and I'd never been left on the street uh, on drugs for nine months. I went down to 95 pounds and uh, decided that I was going to uh, either sober up on my friend's couch or I was going to sober up in prison again. So for the first time in my life, I picked my sorry loser ass up off the sidewalk on my own free will and I slept for three months. Um, anyway, so um, it's been a hell of a ride. I didn't have it the worst. I got a big loving family. Big, big loving family. So, um, anyway. Uh, so I didn't have it the worst, not by, not by far. Um, but um, anyway, so my whole point here is, uh, is to try to bring some justice back into the justice systems. Um, Trying to walk the line is very difficult for me. Um, I di didn't quite make it. I will be seeing an another judge or two. Um, I'm not sure when, but sometime. Um, and, um, and I've always got just one foot over the line. Mm, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I smoke a little bit of pot today. Uh, I'm down from 20 joints to about one, but it's still, unfortunately, enough, that one, to keep me from dealing with reality. So I'm just trying to get through it, and I'm realizing how bad the, the, uh, the, the justice system is. And what, uh, man, it's shocking. It's shocking to see all these hard ass guys that I was raised with that had to murder in jail. And the little kids, man, they didn't murder in maybe juvie. They were nice kids. I remember them, man. They were my friends. We were all in it together. I see them all these years later, now that I'm back in Montreal. And we're like a bunch of Peter Pans running around. My one friend who's done a lot of maximum security time said, yeah, I don't mind you calling me Peter Pan, but just not in the tights. <laughs> and you're funny guy. Anyway. Um, so, so anyways, um, oh shit, I don't know guys, um, I'm, I just wanted to say hi, I know I'm all over the place, um, always looking for help in this shit, there's some pretty amazing people doing some pretty amazing stuff to help, uh, bring awareness to the corrupt, uh, justice system, there's no justice in the justice system. None. My ultimate goal is to rid society of judicial immunity. That's pretty criminal. These judges, these prosecutors, they got free reigns to do whatever the fuck they want. Judges are being paid. Prosecutors are being paid. Lawyers are being paid. What if you got no money? What does that mean for you in the courtroom? Years ago, when I was growing up in the system, in the prisons, 
You didn't see very many rich people in, in prison. Mostly people that were poor went to prison. Now it's a little bit different there. Uh, maybe some of them, uh, they're, they're used to, uh, maybe they tried to do it the legal way and go for justice. No, no, you pay. You pay. If you, if you pay, man. If you got the money, you better pay. Otherwise, you will go to jail. I have a friend uh, in a small town, never been to jail before. And um, he got caught with some cigarettes. Quite a bit of cigarettes. Okay, he, he was doing his shit. Anyway, maybe some pot, not sure. Um, when I say some, <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, but, um, and they put him in jail. But uh, his lawyer had said to him, Pay us another 10000 and you will not go to jail today. As he's sniffing. My friend said, fuck you. I've already paid you thousands and thousands. Uh, no criminal record, the guy. Cigarettes. Indian cigarettes. Went to jail. Like, could he not have done house arrest? No criminal record, he's the time 50 something. Owns his own home. Couldn't he have that as a beautiful, gorgeous, solid as a rock wife? Couldn't he have done house arrest? He would have followed all the rules. I mean, he, he, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have continued. He's, uh, he always had money. Uh, he was not used to, uh, to dealing with prison or uh, the judicial system. He was lucky and he got away with it for a long time, but that one time he didn't. Anyway, they had him. He's a pretty handy guy. They had him in Talbot uh, helping out with the maintenance because he's so handy. <laughs> no program. No, hey man, how's it going? What the hell? What are you? Nothing. They had him as the handyman in the prison. Anyway, it's just bullshit after bullshit after bullshit after bullshit after bullshit from these systems. I am so happy that we are in a class action lawsuit against these fuckers. Major class action, and I'm in about seven of them. There's not much they can do for me. I'm looking 50 in the eye. It's finished. It's. I did, I did, I did my shit. Um, but I want my gold watch. It's on probation or parole for 32 fucking years. You think I can get something, motherfuckers? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, especially since it was them that raised me. What went wrong with me? I was a shy, quiet kid. I was a polite kid. I was a nice kid. I just needed a little bit of guidance, somebody to take an interest in me. We were dirt poor. My sister and I used to go look for our food at three years old. But um, it's all we know, so we have nothing to compare it to. I know that's quite shocking for some. For us, it was our life. We don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, but they uh, they had a chance at, at creating us into being all they had to do was give us some therapists that was just a little bit off but before I went to the system I always wanted to be a lawyer mm, up until I was about 10 years old my whole family knew that because I had a favorite aunt who I got her dimples from um, and I didn't know her but uh, uh, she was spoken very well of all of my life and uh, my dad's sister and um, and um, I wanted to follow in her footsteps, coming from Point St. Charles, Wellington Street, uh, Villa Mart, and then falling into this system where they didn't educate us. They'd throw classrooms mm, together and call it a school. I never got no report cards year after year. No formal report cards. Every time I got tr transferred into another center, they would um, they would give me a placement test and see where where I'm at um, in my education. Um, I'm pissed about that. Uh, I'm so pissed because I do believe that um, 
that life played out the way it did. I don't believe in accidents. I believe that somehow, some way, I needed to learn to live every shitty fucking day that I did in their fucking systems to be able to sit here and talk to you guys. There's others that had to pass 26 years in jail for wrongfully accused shit um, in order to uh, be qualified to change the system. I didn't do that. I didn't have to do that. But I did my time, and it's been a hell of a ride, man. So um, I guess if there's any way that you can help, um, just bring awareness um, to the systems. There's so many powerful people working on this movement right now, um, and, and I'm just one. All right, guys. I hope um, you're doing okay. Um, I speak to a lot of you, and I know you're not doing okay. Um, but it's all you know, so it's not that bad. Uh, it's sadder for the rest of us. I'd have to watch it. Anyway, I wish you guys so much love, so much peace, and I wish you guys a fucking gold watch from these bastards, man. You did your time. You shut up. You did good. All right. I guess uh, next time I, I'm going to try doing the notes because <laughs> I didn't talk about anything I wanted to talk to and we're already at 41 minutes and I know that most of um, my viewers um, have a hard time focusing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, get through it any way you can. All right. And if you you got to stand for something or you fall for anything. Peace.